Hi everyone, I'm back with another unboxing video, of course. <laughs> and this one is to show you guys what I received as a design ambassador for Jesse James Beads. As I let you know, I think in that my last video from Jesse James Beads is that I am now a design ambassador. So I've get, I get a bunch of goodies every month to show you guys and to also uh, give you some inspiration on you know a piece of jewelry show you guys what's coming up so without further ado let's see what we got all right so it looks like let's see oh we got some nice rust fall colors so it looks like this is a pantone beat strand in rust look at how pretty that is i'm gonna kind of bring that up a little bit so you guys can see i love these copper round little things here and then we also let's see what else we got oh we've got a ice cream their ice cream mini bead mixes in root beer float also has some beautiful browns in there some so some check fire polish half matte brown in eight millimeters and then we've got 50 pieces of those Ooh, those is so we've got a ton of nice warm colors to be ready for the fall. Are you guys ready for the fall? I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure I am. So it looks like we also got this carry a bead kit and this one is the hiking edition. I love this. Uh, I love this charity. I want to call it. It's so cool. It says next time you go for a hike, carry a bead. It's so cool for what it does for kids and teens coping with serious illnesses and it helps them stay encouraged. So what you do basically is you keep one bead for yourself and send one back to them along with a caring, along with a caring note to encourage a child or teen coping with a serious illness. These kids are facing major surgeries, difficult procedures and long hospital stays, sometimes away from their loved ones. A simple bead goes a long way to encourage and honor their fight for life. So that, it just warms my heart to do this. So um, it just warms my heart to hear this, that this just one little bead uh, provides so much for a child or a teen dealing with a difficult illness. So we'll use that one as well and we'll send our bead in. So let's go grab our tools and some findings to make something fun. All right, so I ended up opening the, I saved this bead strand for later and bead of courage, but for now, let's just make a little simple necklace. Well, I think it's a, <laughs> and let's just use the ice cream mini mix in root beer float that we received. And then I'm going to need for this necklace is some 20 gauge wire and some 18 gauge wire and some 22 gauge wire. So if you want to get some inspiration from this project, you know which wires I used. And of course, all my pliers, pretty much almost all of them. <laughs> the flat nose pliers, curved nose pliers, round nose pliers, my side cutters. And to start off with, I'm gonna need my six step veil plier. So what I'm gonna do is first, make our centerpiece and I took three of these drops which are really pretty. I'm going to kind of push this to the side a little bit. Oh and you know what I'm going to put my mat down so you guys can see the project. Okay so I put the mat down. Like I said I love the wood background but for the projects it's I understand it's pretty hard to see. So I took the three of these drops and first of all I'm going to take the 22 gauge wire and cut some off to first wire wrap our drops, get them ready for our center, our um, pendant, I mean. So I'm going to cut about a good foot and a half. And since the wire is kind of on the curlier side, I'm going to take my nylon jaw pliers and kind of straighten that out. Straighten this wire out, make sure it's nice and flat so when you wrap it, it's not all crinkled up when you wrap it on your bead. And do that. 
that. All right. So what you want to do is put your wire in your bead like so. And make sure that there we go. You've got that, and then you can go up here and around. I left a little bit, like two inches, around the the top of the drop. Then you just start to wire to go around in a little circle, like a spiral, like so. That way, you don't need to use. Or find head pins that match or I mean I guess you could make your head pins but this I think works out really well to just and adds a nice little decorative touch to it keep spinning it it's just nice soft wire easy to use with your hands power wire is a really good wire there I think that should be good. There we go. So here we go. Here's the first wire wrap one. Then I'm going to cut the edge off of this one. Now, happy to see we have plenty left over. Like so. And got these little, I just got these little ones from Zeron. And I like it because you can really get in there to make those little finishing touches without damaging your wire too much. And then I'm going to wire wrap this. Of course, as always, you bend the wire, grab your round nose pliers, like so, bring the wire over, get your pliers out of the way, and you can either use your other pliers or your hand, but this time, just to make sure that the handle doesn't get in the way, I'm just using my plier. Doesn't have to be super perfect. We're going for a little bit of a boho look. So if you do a messy wire, that's absolutely fine. So see, you've got like a little cone and kind of straighten out your your little loop and cut your little extra off to the side and again just kind of tuck that in There. So now we have our first little drop, kind of straighten it out, make sure it's going to fall nice and even. So now we got our first drop and let's go wire our other drops. All right, so now that we have our little, three little teardrops, now we're gonna take a piece of 18 gauge wire and straighten this out. Be careful not to straighten out too much because this one has a coating on it. It's vintage bronze. And you'll it'll the coating that it has on it will come off. I mean it won't it using it, but with sharp tools it will. So basically you take your piece like that, and I I'm, I'm probably went overboard, but I can use the pieces for something else. I just rather have extra. And we're going to use our largest, our largest uh, bale here. And so I'm going to take it right between, see how it's not, there's nothing sticking out, and twist. Oops. Just until we got a P type loop. Okay. And then... We're going to go right underneath, like so. And again, we're going to 
twist the wire. See how we have, and it's going over, it's coming around and it's going over like so. So then what we wanna do is do the one on this side. So again, I'm gonna make like a four leaf clover. I'm going to go right there and twist this and even it out with the one underneath. And the last one, I thought about making it a three leaf clover, but I think I like it better like this. And we have a four leaf like so. So then what we're going to do is cut this little piece off here, right about there. Make sure you don't cut all the way through. There we go. And now we have our little four piece, which I'm going to use like this. You could kind of squish it out on your mat if you want, kind of reshape it. It's all good. Then we're gonna hang these three little drops from here. And that will start off our pendant for the necklace we're gonna make. So what you can do is just put these through the loops like you would a key on a keychain. <laughs> you just don't want to you don't want to pull too much so you don't misshape. Lift this a little bit. There we go. Oofta. And then put this one on here. There we go. Squish that down. Now we've got our three. Then we need one more. We'll put that one right here. Uh, open that up. Squish that down. And if you want, you can hammer, now that everything's on, you can hammer your piece. And that's what I think I will do with a, a nylon hammer just to kind of maintain that shape, make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Or if you don't want, if you don't have or don't want to hammer it, you can also wire it here. Put a couple of little wire connections so that it holds its shape as well. But this is our first, our beginning, so to speak. And then we're going to grab our beads and start building from here. Okay, guys, I am back with a half a design. <laughs> and I just wanted to do this first before I came on with you guys and I needed to grab a few things extra. If you don't know me yet, <laughs> you will soon that I love to mix my medium. So like here we have wire. I'm going to use this awesome metallics from Softlex, and this is medium. And this color is copper color. That's the other thing that, you know, you can mix your, not only the mediums, like I had leather, and then I have the stringing wire, and then some, you know, actual wire here to make a shape. But also, I love that Softlex offers different colors and we can mix different metals and different colors here. Even though they're all different, they some way or shape, I don't know, you guys let me know. They all, I feel like they all tie in together. So let's finish this side here. Then we have this really cool copper. I think it'll, it'll look good. If not, we can change it later. But I thought it'd be cool to add it to the leather, kind of like a big... I don't know, like a big fun clasp. So again, let's finish this up. So what I did is I worked off the spool as always and strung. If you hear heavy breathing, it's my dog. <laughs> I have a pug and I don't exactly breathe very quietly. So let's start off with, like I said, I put it on the wire that way. I don't, I only use the wire that I need and these are little bit more expensive so I don't want to waste it so there we can add this so this is the first bead that we're adding 
And then this little, this black little rondelle, we're gonna add that to it. To the wire, like so. And then one of these fire polish beads, check beads that they sent us. And then this metal little spacer here. Like that and another fire polish bead. I love the matte and shiny on these. And then a little cage bead that we can string. Now these, you can have different ways to string them. I strung this one, I believe it was triangle. So you got little squares, but there's also triangles. So, I went triangle through the other triangle, it's straight across. I kind of like how it looks like a rhombus, you know, how it sets, sits here on the wire. Make sure, yeah, got it out the right way. <laughs> and I added one of these fun matte drugs, kind of like a peachy brown color. And then a potato chip. I don't know, somebody called them potato chips once and it stuck since. So potato chip, and these I just kind of, I don't really care which way they're going. So they lay nicely whichever way you put them. And then another, uh, this rondelle, a little bit long, larger, like a stone gray. And then we have a little shiny, these little shiny balls, little like, what do you call, sparkly beads, metal beads. And then one of these little drugs, and these are really fun. It almost looks like they're, nope, that's not it. Where is it? Now I got, got them all mixed up. Whoop. Here it is. These are really fun because depends on depending on where they catch the light. Look at how they just kind of they kind of add a little special sparkle. Does this one have no hole? I think this one doesn't have a hole. Oh no, it does. I just couldn't see it. Oh my goodness. All right, so we have that one and then another potato chip. Just following what I did on the other side. <clears throat> Another little potato chip and another one of these fire polish beads. And another potato chip. <laughs> there we go. And then finally, kind of bring it all the way down again to this little black rondelle little black uh, metal metal rondelle or maybe what is it gun metal I would think and then I'm going to take a silver since we've got silver accents we can definitely use a silver crimp bead so there's our silver crimp bead and what you do is you add it to your wire and then you thread it back in like so and you could use a wire garden if you, guardian if you want, but I don't think this one, this wire needs it. It's pretty sturdy and it's got a special coat, which is that gives it that bronzy color. <clears throat> so then you grab your crimping pliers and these I have also from Zeron. And what I do, you wanna make sure that the wires are not crossed inside the crimp bead. So then you lay it in this part, in this little like crook that it's got here, that has the other side sticking out. You lay it on there. And once you have your crimpy wherever you want it, then you squeeze, see? Now that you've squeezed, you bring it to, there's three sizes here for crimping. So, we're going to put it right, uh, where is it, right here. So I like to use the second one. There's 
three there's three sizes I, I like to use the second one because if you use the first one and it's too small then you're just going to ruin your crimp one tip that I got from Meredith from Beatalon is never ever ever squeeze it with your the tip of your pliers because you just weaken the crimp and then I have a little tail left so that's okay I can put it through again to strengthen the wire put it the beads through it and I'm going to kind of thread it to through a couple of beads and then cut off any excess so it's not sticking out let me see if it goes through this one yeah okay so here we go it's gone through so we have just a little piece here sticking out we can clip that off like so and then we will bring all the rest down like that and now i know that whatever i cut off is not going to be wasted we just you know cut off that little piece and these rolls are not that large <laughs> so i think about that it gives you enough room to twist it back into the crimp because if you cut it too short threading it back to the crimp gets pretty pretty hard at least for me might be my nails <laughs> so there we go so now that we have that we're going to loop it through here <clears throat> and loop it through the crimp bead. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit through this bead right here, so we're gonna have to clip off kind of close to it, but that's okay, we got a large piece over here. If anything were to break, we can re-crimp re, uh, it, but I doubt it. It's This wire is pretty strong. Um, and when in doubt, just add glue which is what we're going to do in a little bit too and then now that I have make sure that the wires are separated and that there's enough wiggle room for the see I need it to be a little bit more make sure you want to make sure that it wiggles so that you can drape you can give it that drape at least I like it to be drapey and not stiff and then, there we go. Yeah. And then you just kind of hold your little crimp in place. It can be a little tricky. Then you grab your crimper again. Like so. Put it in that little channel. And make sure that your wires are spread. And squeeze. See, and now we have the nice drape moves around and now we can crimp this side to it put it on the second on the second little channel see how I have it right there and oops, and squeeze so now we can cut this right here and this one we did end up with a little bigger piece but that's okay so now we have our two sides ready to go and then for the leather I have this leather that I I got from you can get it at your local bead stores it's just I think this is pretty sure it's two it's 1.5 millimeter leather round so here we're going to do a couple barrel knots so you're going to put it thread it through the your wire all right <clears throat> so you can get it as close as you can to the loop again you go once twice and three times and then you're going to pass this little piece of leather 
is going to go. So I, I, what I like to do, see I'm holding it in my finger. See how I'm holding those three, three little loops. So what I like to do is grab here my tweezers. It's harder for me because I'm trying to make sure I stay in frame. Usually I have it up against me. So I grab my, even these are fine, or you, you can grab your little tweezers. And what I do with the tip is that I, I push it through the three loops. Kind of wiggle it through. There you go, see, it's coming out over here. And we pull. And then here's where you can really make the adjustment. If you don't want to use that much leather, you can just really tighten it. I tighten this one here. This one, I, I this little barrel knot I learned from Kelly, I think. I think her name is Kelly and she's got a channel on here too. She's got a bead shop in Canada. So I want, I like to always give credit. Took a, a, one of her classes with her and she taught us how to make these really cute barrel knots. So there we go. Now that everything's nice and tight, we will cut here, this piece here, about there, I have a little piece left. And what I did was I cut 15 inches because again, I made a middle knot to put these cute beads on. And then, because these beads here have a large hole, so I thought it would be cute to embellish the leather with the beads. And these beads are a large hole, but they're so pretty. I don't know if you guys can see. I thought they were, at first I thought they were opaque, but no, they have like a crystal center. And then the paint on, or I don't think it's a paint, it's part of the glass over it. They're so pretty. These are awesome. Like I said, Jesse James really knows how to uh, make their mixes. It's just so easy to create anything. As long as you have the materials you want to work with, you don't have to worry about the beads. Okay, so I'm going to cut from this knot that I made, I'm going to cut 15 inches just to make sure I have enough to make all the knots I need. Now that I'm not dragging this around. This roll lasted me a long time. It's from, a, a, is it American leather? I'll link it down below. Now here, we're just going to wrap around a single one because we don't need a loop. We just need a barrel knot in the middle. So one, two, three loops. Sorry if I've got my fingers in it, but I've got to keep hold of these little loops. Okay, hopefully you can see it there. That's my, I've got my three loops, which make up my little barrel. And then I'm gonna thread this through the top. Don't let it go just yet. And kind of pull on both sides gently. Gently. So that you don't lose that little barrel shape. All right, so we do the last one and this one we are gonna need a loop for our, we're gonna put this in first for our clasp. And then this one we are gonna go over to again so we have the two and I want to make sure that again, I'm not too far off to make it there. So again, you go one, two. after we put the clasp in, put those two together and you're going to go over these two. So I put this, this one I'm going to put over one, two, 
two, and then you start to hold your loops again. Okay. Start to hold your loops. One, but now you're going towards the clasp. Two, three. This one I'm gonna do another one, just to make sure that it looks nice. Cause this one, this last loop was falling apart. Okay. So there we go. We have this here. And we're going to thread it through the three little loops that we have here. Just like so. See how it's going through? And then we are going to tighten. Make sure you've got the same distance. So it looks like we're gonna pull it down a little bit. And that looks about right. Yep, that's exactly where we want it. And now you can just pull both sides to make sure that your pieces of leather are the same. Maybe it's a tad longer, but not too much. But, oh, and I forgot, don't forget to add your other bead before you put the clasp on. All right, so now, now we did have a lot left, but I can use this for a different, different, uh, you can just, sometimes you can just add little knot, uh, knots to other projects. So don't throw away all your scraps all the time. And then, since I've got this in place, I'm gonna cut this. And then I'm just gonna take some either E6000 with a toothpick and put some in here or some hypo cement glue in there just to make sure, especially on these two ends, not the, not this one, but these two ends just to make sure that they stay, I'll let it over, you know, uh, sit overnight and dry. So here we go. Here is, and then you just, oops, all they have to do is like that. And there is our little, I don't know, boho necklace. So I'm gonna put it on the bust and I will close out with the pictures of this on the bust. So let me know what you guys think. Did you like it? Do you like the mixed uh, mediums too? You know, the mixed materials and the mixed metals. I think even though they have different mixed metals, they still kind of really coordinate and go together with the beads and everything. So you, I, I added little accents that would tie in all the colors. So again, let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as it helps my channel be discovered. Also, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a new tutorial or unboxing. I've got uh, more coming up as always. And thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. If you've been here for a while, I appreciate each and every one of the people that subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoy my tutorials. Make sure to take care of yourself and be safe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.